Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Cheapo device review. In today's one I've got something that I'm still kind of questioning why I got this in the first place but actually I have a reason as to why we got this in the first place but the item that I'm going to be taking a look at today was found on my last live stream that you folks generously donated to seeing this as well as another product that I'll be reviewing soon so a big thank you to all of these folks displayed on screen for donating towards seeing these items reviewed on the channel. I may be just displaying more people from previous streams that donated towards seeing stuff, but I'll just display everyone's names here that I've got in my little document. Just know that I appreciate it so much, and we've all decided we are going to skip looking at an S23 Ultra clone because it just seemed that it was not meant to be, so instead you all decided that we should stick with another device which I've received, and we'll be covering that soon, as I said. So stay tuned for that one, and I hope you will enjoy it. And also, I have to give a massive thank you to Kevin Salt who donated two phones, sent them all the way from Canada to Australia. It was a BlackBerry Priv and a Samsung Leadership 8, which I have right here. And this thing is amazing. I'm still not sure if I want to do a review on it or not. Basically, this phone has two screens. You have the front screen and then you have the inside. It is just a huge chunk of a phone but it is cool so massive thank you to Kevin Saltz for donating these to me I really do appreciate it and you know thank you for sending these via DHL because Canada Post said oh no it has batteries in them thus it's illegal to send them so that's a thing. I actually did film footage of me doing like a mini job lot on them but number one it went for too long number two things didn't go as well as they wanted to because the Blackberry Priv that he sent me I was using parts for that one with another one that stuffed up and it was just all over the place so that job lot's in the rest of the job lots that I'll never publish. One day I will go through them, maybe, and upload them. I don't know when, one day. Anyways, that was a very, very long intro, so as per usual, if you need to skip through the video, there's timestamps in the description as well as the pinned comment, so feel free to use them whenever, wherever, and if you need to use Adblock, then that is also fine as well. Now, an estimate for this video is 45 minutes. Let's see how I go. So in today's one, I'll be looking at the Mafem Camo Military Rugged Outdoor Cell Phones with Antenna Large Key Power Bank Torch 4 SIM Russian Keyboard Elder that's all it's called. And unfortunately, it's no longer available. It was available yesterday, but now it's sold out. Hopefully this is still sold on AliExpress somewhere, but currently from the actual manufacturer of this phone being Mafem or Mafam or Mafem? Mafem. That'll do. They don't have it in stock. I did pay a total of $35.86 Australian for this. So I'll display a quick currency conversion chart on screen for you all to get a rough idea of how much this thing costs around the world. It was $32.60 for just the unit by itself with free shipping. So a very cheapo device, but there's some really questionable things about this that we'll get to very soon. There was three colorways. I chose camouflage yellow. But if you actually look at the picture displayed, that's not yellow at all. Sure thing. Now there's not too much to look at in the listing, but we do have this quick write-up that says the feature, which shows the size being 146 by 6 millimeters by 60.8 millimeters by 26.5 millimeters. So a bit of a chunky device. We'll see when we actually unbox it. The battery capacity is 4,800 milliamp hours. The screen size is a lovely 2.2 inch and it supports English, Russian, Arabic, French, Huaza? 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 And Portuguese. The keyboard we don't have to worry about. It should be English or mine. This phone does only support 2G, so I won't be able to use this as a phone. It's more just a curiosity thing. And other precautions. When you receive the phone, please tear off the insulating sticker on the battery interface. Will do. Number two, when you receive the phone, please charge it first and then work. There's no other steps. It just charge it first and then work. Cool. Now, I want to give you all a sneak peek of this phone before I start unboxing it, because you need to get a bit of a concept of what's going on. So I'm going to let you have a look at this image displayed on screen. So please take a look at it. Make sure you observe everything that's going on. When you have observed everything that is going on, please let me know, and then I'll continue on. I'm happy to wait. Let's do a little bit of a countdown. Three, two, one. Okay. So... First things first, it's called a Ferrari Mobile. Ferrari is spelt wrong. Number two, the car that's displayed on the screen is not a Ferrari. It's in fact a BMW. Number three, the Ferrari logo that's actually on there looks a bit goofy, but that's okay. Number four, why is Internet Explorer on the keyboard? And number five, basically all of the things I've already stated, but multiply them by 10. Well then, our curiosity has peaked. This weirdo phone on AliExpress that you folks donated to see, is it gonna be anything spectacular? Well, there's a couple of features that this thing has that I haven't quite told you all about. So let me go ahead and unbox this thing and show you this device. 
whatever it was called. What was it called again? Mathem. There was actually no name, was it? It's just a Mathem. Mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematics. The package has information on both sides of it, so I'll just open it from the top and work my way through. But this took five days to get from China to Australia, and it arrived on the second day of my break, and it has been sitting in its package over to the side, and I didn't want to open it because I wanted to keep my reaction as genuine for when I see this thing in person. Plus, it was a break. I'm not meant to be filming and unboxing stuff. All right, well, let's investigate this thing. I'll just poke my knife through it, and hopefully we'll get through it. Yep. Oh boy, here is the box. It is the S555 by Ferrari Mobile. Take a look at that horse. Looks good. I'll display the actual Ferrari logo just there. Looking good. So the box also... <laughs> it, it's the parts for SIM cards and the... <laughs> the, si the, the signal strong. I'm glad the signal strong. Good stuff, Ferrari Mobile. It has a colourful light. At the back is a big RGB ring, uh, so when you play music, it's like a rave party. Can't wait to show you that. It doubles as a power bank, obviously because of the battery capacity, and Super Torch. I have a feeling this is the DJ1000 rebranded, isn't it? It probably is, but yeah, four SIM cards though. So we'll have to see if there are similarities with this and the DJ1000. The 2G band list at the bottom is literally just four bands on the 2G network, so I won't be doing too much there. The speaker is a 25 by 35 box. They could have told us it's a big spurker, but anywho, but we get a good idea of what the phone does look like and around the box we have 4800 milliamp hour big battery and 14.5 millimeter LED. We'll have to see if it's as bright as the DJ1000. And then we have the IMI list over there with all four of them. And they sent me camouflage brown, not camouflage yellow. That's sad. Feel free to check these IMIs and see if they correspond with the Ferrari Mobile S555. If it does happen to correspond with this, I'll do a little jig, I guess. On the back of the box, we have camera, vibration, torch, music, MP3, MP4 player, FM radio. The box is made of 100% post consumer recycled paper and printed with soy based inks. It is 100% recyclable. But then there's a picture of it not going into the... Oh, all right, okay. Well, let's take a look at this thing. The box is also quite heavy, so I assume that the unit is a big chunk that it is. DJ 1000 all over again. See? And then inside the accessories, we have not a lot. We have the antenna, which probably won't help a lot. We have some foam that's just sitting there. And then we have some instructions that have Ferrari Mobile written on them. Oh, this book is also made of 100% post-consumer recycled paper and printed with soy-based inks. It is 100% recyclable with the same if okay so basically this is just a how to open phone how to press button and that is all that does cool they got signal right there good on them getting started using the menus fantastic looking good alrighty uh the charger on the other hand what does this look like micro usb Oh, okay. It weighs nothing. The cable on this weighs more than the adapter, and I'm pretty sure I could just do a little... something like that. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. Hello, Big Clive. Feel free to tell me if that is safe. I don't think that's safe at all. I would not want to plug this in to anything. Free e-waste. Yay. What was the specs on it, by the way? It just says adapter on it. 5 volt at 1 amp. The model was an HX008 as well. That just opened up surprisingly easy. Here is the thing. Our thing has fingerprints on it already, but that's okay. Take that off. Uh, no, the fingerprints... <laughs> are actually underneath the screen protector pre-applied. It's plastic on the screen too, so it's all plastic with a rugged look to it, but I have a feeling that if I dropped this, it would positively break. Well, shit. Because even the screws for the sides are fake. Everyone knows the size of the iPhone 4. Well, that's the iPhone 4 in comparison to this thing. But it only costs 30 bucks. I'm pretty sure you can get a refurbished iPhone 4 for about 30 bucks. But this has RGB, so thus it's worth it. Also, while I'm at break, I did find this at e-waste. It works. It's on 5.1.1, and it has driver pre-installed on it, which is one of my favorite games. And the back cover was actually this transparent one. This video is going to be super rambly, but that's okay. Starting this again from having a break, you know, I've got to work my way back into things. Oh, there's a port cover. Wait, what? I'm still questioning why it's called Ferrari Mobile and it doesn't even look like a Ferrari. I mean, the gold could 
indicate luxury, but all right, sure. So at the top, we have the Ferrari logo with an earpiece built in there somewhere, or that could be just the one speaker. The 2.2 inch display, which they could have made the display a little bit bigger, but they chose to do 2.2 inches. S555, Ferrari Mobile, Internet Explorer, Music, FM, one SIM card and two SIM card. And we have some option keys as well as call and call end. Buttons do feel pretty cheap and creaky. There's a power bank shortcut there, numeric keypad in English as well, so that's all good. And then going around the device, we have these plastic decoration pieces with the fake screws in them, so not much to look at there. The big LED that's on there, the 14.5 millimeter LED. They have this cover over the antenna, but I can't seem to twist it off. We'll get to that soon. On the back, we have the RGB ring with the camera saying music than digital camera. But look how big they made the camera area, then how small the camera actually is. Good old VGA 0.3 megapixels there. Ferrari Mobile once again on the back and a little antenna doodad logo printed in there. Look, the camouflage doesn't look too bad, I guess. At the bottom, we have the headphone jack, micro USB, and USB type A for using this as a power bank. How one gets into this is just like so. The back cover has S557 on it now. Good job with the paint. Very well done with the paint. A for effort. S Mobile. Wait, hang on. We have to bring out the legend itself. The ports on the DJ1000 and the S555 are different. So it is probably a different motherboard. But the battery, is this a, oh no, the battery is H Mobile. This is S Mobile, which is in the T-Mobile font. That's good. Can the battery from the, no, I was going to say, can the battery from this fit in there? But no, that looks like a candy bar and that just looks like a Polaroid film. So they're likely different phones then, we've established that. Taking the battery out of this device, there you go. That's this big chunk of a thing. And they've just stuck this 4,800 milliamp hour sticker on, but what is under said sticker? Oh! Oh, hello. The explanation is there's two 2,400 milliamp hour batteries in there. And I have a feeling it's like the actual battery cells that are in there. And then they've just stuck that over the super battery. And there you go. Uh, also battery. S-Mobile, designed by S-Mobile Hong Kong. Use the authorized charger only. May explode if closed or disposed of in fire. Keep the battery out of reach of children. Do not short circuit. Do not squeeze or shock. Do not disassemble. Squeeze. Oh, I shouldn't have squeezed that because it did make a noise. Alrighty. Inside of the device, we'll just take the insulating stuff off there. And there we go. We have the cluster of SIM cards in there. So we've got support for a mini SIM, two micro SIMs, and a nano SIM, and a micro SD card slot as well. Yeah, if you can name all of the uses for having four SIM cards in a device, then um, feel free. Oh, I've located the big spurker. The big spurker is just there too, by the way. Well, I guess we should just put a SIM card in it just for the sake of it. And I'm going to put my spooky 64 gig micro SD card in this just to see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll use something a bit smaller, but it should be fine. Oh, okay. I'm trying to unscrew that, but it doesn't unscrew. It's just a little cover, but we want to use it in all of its janky glory. Now it's a walkie talkie. Pretty good. All right. Kind of doesn't close, but that's okay. It has power. Okay, that LED's bright. Oof, that's a bright LED. We have a bright LED. I'll have to do a dedicated segment shining this around in the backyard to see how bright that is. Will it match the DJ1000 though? How many times have I mentioned DJ1000? All right, let's power this thing on. I assume this is the on button. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh, oh. it did light up. Not sound activated. We've booted up. Let's take a look at the screen. We can see the BMW. You can count the pixels. It just made an iPhone noise, didn't it? It did. <laughs> mobile. They've plastered Ferrari mobile everywhere, but they didn't get the whole Ferrari on the main screen correct. Well done to you. Well, we have no service, obviously, because 2G only. Seems that my micro SD card's been detected, but we just go into menu and we have more games. We've got contacts, messages, call logs, settings, games, image, camera, recorder, flashlight, stage light, multimedia, FM radio, flash when incoming, ebook, profiles, services, my files, Bluetooth, calendar, alarm, world clock, unit conversion, calculator, tasks, notes, STK, and stopwatch. So we got a fair few things to test on this. Let's press buttons. Internet Explorer, what do you do? Oh, that's just the internet. Well, that makes sense anyways. And if we hold audio, it found BFG Division already. That's good. Holding FM, searching for channels. Oh, hello. 
Well, FM radio works, but we'll get back to that. I just realized it didn't come with a micro USB cable. Connecting it to my PC shows the internal storage being 60 kilobytes with 56K free. Make sure to use that wisely. If we now try and charge, let's try this Note 5. So if I now plug that into there, does anything happen or do I have to now activate the power mode? Charger opened. All right, so should be just, there you go, nice. It's probably gonna be extremely slow to charge, but at least you have a cool looking power bank, depending on your description of cool. Also, just a quick close up of the buttons as well. The D-pad actually doesn't look too bad, and this big center button with all the little grips and textures around, it's pretty cool. It's not metal or anything, it's just all plastic, but you know, you've got to admit it does kind of make it the center of attention of this thing, you know? You look at this thing, the first thing you look at is either the logo or that, most likely the D-pad. I guess we just go through this, we start from contacts and go all the way along. So, contacts. Actually has a bunch of numbers on it, but these are all on the SIM card. Can we do anything fun within here though? Memory status, 175 out of 250, yeah, so there's nothing on the phone, it's all on the SIM card. Messages, all right, let me try typing on this thing. This, nope, that's the wrong area. Oh, the buttons are terrible. This is the thing. Yes, you can type on it. Um, buttons just feel incredibly cheap though, but at least you can text fast on it if you wanted to. Also, the icons look familiar. You'll have to let me know where they're pinched from. Call logs has nothing really in it to note. I guess we'll go through settings though. Oh boy, ringtones. Are you gonna be a big spurker? Yes, you are. Call settings, uh, multi-SIM, which you can set SIM names. You can call SIM1 personal. Then you could set SIM2 as business. Then you could set SIM3 to shady shit. And then set SIM4 to, oh, I was trying to put even more shadier shit, but even more shadier shit will do. That's a cool little feature. At least you can name your SIM cards, but does it actually come up on screen? Oh, no, it doesn't. Maybe if I did have service, it might actually say personal and stuff like that, or instead it'll just say the carrier name. Otherwise, that's it for call settings. Phone settings, we have date and time, language settings, shortcut settings, auto power on and off, power saving mode, batteries at 55%. Glad to know that it actually has a percentage in here, so it's kind of cool. And there's actually a power saving mode too. Shortcut settings, and that's it. Display, we have, oh, wallpaper, static wallpaper. They only include one wallpaper and it's the BMW. Round of applause for these geniuses. Well done. You call it a Ferrari mobile, but you couldn't even get it correct by putting a Ferrari wall. Okay, well done, well, well done. Idle display settings just has all stuff there. Nothing really to note. Contrast, backlight, we'll just put always on because it keeps turning off by itself. Keypad backlight time, I guess we'll just do 20 seconds. Let's see how bright the keypad lights are. Are they even on? That is what you call keypad lights. It seems that only eight's lit up and that's it. That's really helpful. Security, we're gonna have pins, modify the cell phone password, privacy, auto keypad lock, we'll have the two, I don't know, five minutes, that'll do. Lock screen by end key, guard locked, fixed styling, not too much to look at. Oh, profiles, oh dear, okay. Call ringtone is at 15. You are not a Ferrari mobile. You are trying to be an iPhone. But if we go to fixed ringtones, there's only two. What's the second one? Go on. Ah, God! Ah, ah. Did you hear that? That's Ripley. I think her eardrums are busted too after hearing that. That sounded like hell from a tin can. Wow. Oh, thank God it's over. Okay, that wasn't too horrible. Okay, so that's all the ringtones. All right, well, um, that didn't last too long. Whatever that second ringtone was, that was absolute hell. Okie dokie, ring type. Oh, the vibration motor does work. That's good. Key tone is ringtone one, battery low alert, and power ringtone. You can't change the power off animation. Sad. Not much customization here. That's about it within profiles. And in connections, we just have network account, data connection settings, network selection, and that's really it within settings. Should we do games? That's it. 
Just one, Snake. And what version of Snake are you? Good. Game over. Start. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, D-pad. I was using the numeric keys to uh, try and move, but... Oh, there's no sounds. Image just shows all the images that are on my micro SD card. Let's go to camera. Oh, dear. Image viewer, DV mode, effect, contrast, brightness, white balance, settings. Let's see what we can do. 960 by 1280. But I'd say it's probably VGA most likely. Quality, advanced, shutter sound. Oh, what's the shutter sound going to be? Uh, storage. Best to save it on the memory card since we have no internal storage whatsoever. So once again, with these cheap devices, if you put it to a high resolution, you can't zoom in. What is the shutter sound though? Okay, that was pretty sad. Yeah, so 640 by 480, I can do an eight times digital zoom. Ooh. And then if we go to DV mode, we have the option to have the recording in 240 by 320. The video format, oh, 3GP only. I can't zoom in on 320 by 240, but if I change it down, can I zoom in? No, I can't zoom in. Uh, currently it's nighttime. Even with the LED on, that wouldn't help taking photos. Unless you were to do some mad hacks and make the LED that away, then possibly. But otherwise, I'll just switch the torch off. I will do the camera test tomorrow and splice in the photos and videos that I take with this thing. And then we can all marvel at how wonderful they look. Testing video recording on the Ferrari Mobile S555 thing, um, it's at about three frames a second, I believe. That's what it looks like. Um, I did a nighttime shot, and the video turned out to be like 176 by 220, even though it was set to 240 by 320. So we'll just have to see what happens. But I'm holding it sideways because I just thought it might be a little bit easier to manage, perhaps, kind of, if you can kind of see my reflection on holding the phone sideways. <laughs> I mean, it's manageable, and uh, look at that stabilization go. Oof. But hey, it's nothing special for the uh, $30 price tag of this thing, and uh, I could put the torch on, but you can't see that because obviously the torch is pointing from the top and the camera's on the back, so that's not really going to help you out. But you can do race party mode, which you'll see. Uh, yeah, ignore the grass, it's fine, it needs to be cut. And then I've got lemons that have just dropped everywhere. Whoop! Lemons and lemons and lemons and lots of lemons. And then the faraway icon looks a little something like this. But I cannot zoom in. Even on a lower video setting, I still cannot zoom in. I'm just stuck there. But we can imagine what zooming would look like anyway. Yeah, that's the uh, camera test on the Ferrari Mobile S555. It's just such a bizarre name, but sure, why not? Let's agree with it. Let's just keep moving on. That's Ripley. In the sink again. Yeah. I have a TV on top of the washing machine. I have to put it out in the garage. I just forgot about it. Well, at least you got to see Ripley on this uh, lovely camera. So this is what Rave Party looks like with this thing. Um, you can see the froggos having a good time. Everybody's having a good time. This is fun.
fun. Let's see what flowers look like. Rave party style. Yeah. Rave party Ripley. Wee. And I can review all products from now on with rave party mode. Yay. It's so silly, but I love it. Alrighty, you've just seen the photos and videos that I took with this device. I did a couple of quick shots in my office, and I can say the quality is about as good as you'll expect from a $30 device. And same goes with the video quality as well. I'm sure you weren't expecting too much from this thing, but if I do have any other thoughts for this camera, I'll splice them in during editing. So if you noticed during the camera test, the videos were in 128 by 160 and in the settings for the phone, it says 320 by 240. However, it doesn't record in 320 by 240. I've tried several things. I made sure it was set to that, but the videos always turn out in 128 by 160 so that's the absolute best quality we'll get from this thing otherwise the camera quality was uh very very good very good indeed i took a picture of a tesla cybertruck hot wheels cybertruck and uh, it looks like this on the phone i can't enhance or do anything can you even see what's on the display the whole time i probably should have the phone a little bit like that but now i can't see what's on the display um if you just tilt it kind of the display goes a little bit iffy with its viewing angles. It's not too bad though, judging by the photo quality that I got there, high hopes for the camera. But anyways, let's move on because we've got recorder next, which... This is the recording quality of the Mathem S555 Ferrari Mobile, I've forgotten the thing name. Okay, so yeah, the speaker is in there. We know how the speaker sounds. It's loud, it's big. It is definitely a big spurker, but we'll have to see when we get to the speaker test. Flashlight is just as simple as that, switching the flashlight on or off, or you have the little switch if you want. Also, I just can't get over how plasticky this is. The DJ1000 was really plasticky, but this is just even more plasticky. It just... The texture and everything, it just, it could be made from recycled plastic. Could be a thing. Stage light. Oh, hello. 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 Alrighty. Rave party time. Woo! Wee! This is fun. Yup, there are RGBs. I kind of do like this. And then it's like, it is illuminating. It doesn't look too bad, actually. I know it's gimmicky and stuff, and it now looks like a children's toy, but still. It's pretty cool though. Actually, I'm gonna take some videos with this on so you can have low quality rave party if you want to, but you can't program it any other way. It's just either have it on or off. I'm outside, it's pitch black, it's very windy. And if I now switch on the torch, aha. Now that's pretty good for our little rave party thing going on there. You got lights on the front, party in the back, business at the top, off you go. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Let's do a little test. This is probably a 10 meter test. No, a lot more, probably 15 meters. So the lemon tree is all the way there. Holy moly. Yeah, that's uh, that's impressive. I could literally just use this as my torch. Can I point it all the way? Oh, I can even point it all the way at the tree out there. Oh, I wonder if I could hit the faraway aircon. The faraway aircon's there. Let me see if I can shine it onto it. Oh, I can. <laughs> Oh, okay. All right, that's enough torch. <laughs> Don't want to scare the neighbors. Uh, yeah, that's impressive. Really good, actually. I mean, for a $30 torch, <laughs> that in itself is pretty damn good. Wow. Lemon. Lemons. This has been fun. Now it's dark again. Except for rave party. What a fantastic piece of equipment. So if it's off, when I go to playing music and stuff, does it light up? I think it will, because multimedia is here. DV, video, which has videos that I've taken oh, with... Oh, the, the Servo no. K07, I think that's K07? Pen phone. 
Pen phone. No, it didn't light up. Maybe it just lights up during boot, most likely. Well, we're at the speaker test. So if we go to settings, we have equalizer as regular classic Odium Jazz Rock and Soft Rock. We'll just leave that. Bluetooth audio devices if we wanted to, but we want to see how good the big speaker is or big spurker. I like calling these big spurkers from now on. Bless the DJ 1000. Here we go. This will be fun. That's as loud as it gets. Alrighty. That's loud. And you know what? That actually doesn't sound too bad at all. Granted, it is not the clearest speaker on the planet, but for a $30 device, that actually doesn't sound too bad at all. And I'll just quickly see also if I plug in headphones, if our 3.5 mil jack works. If I'm plugged in, Yes, you are, except it sounds like garbage. These headphones actually have volume controls on them, so it wasn't quite working through the phone, but why would you need headphones when you can just use the big speaker? Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Some of the big speakers in devices that I've looked at the channel are hit and miss, but this one's actually really good. I don't remember how the DJ1000 sounded. I think it was pretty good, so I'll put it on par with that. <laughs> what is changer? Oh, hang on, wait, what? I'm sorry, I got bamboozled there. If you go to changer, it says charger setting. <laughs> yeah, fair enough then. This function is plug and play when inserted into the USB line can be used as mobile power supply to charge other devices. Note the use of process, do not answer and dial the phone. <laughs> Okay, so if you're using this as a power bank, don't use this as a phone, it may explode. I thought changer may have been like a voice changer or something like that, but no, changer is just charger. They done goofed with that one. FM radio. Finally get to test FM radio. What's on Australian radio on a Wednesday night at 10.04 p.m.? Okay. You've got to point it upwards and towards the ceiling for it to work, and it will work. But if you don't have it pointed towards the ceiling, it will just crackle and stuff. It's not bad, though. Can I also note that with the bass in that previous song, the whole phone was also shaking as well. Not as much with BFG Division, but with bass-heavy songs, this thing kind of shakes because of it being fairly cheap and doesn't weigh terribly much. You know, it's got that extra doof-doof sort of thing. I think I picked up the devil. Pretty sure I've picked up the devil. So I completely finished the review, and you'll see this footage at the end. But I'm just talking about the phone and stuff, and I just thought out of curiosity I'd pull the antenna, and uh, sure enough, it's an actual antenna. Didn't even realize it. But uh, now I should be able to pick up hell. What the hell have I picked up? What the hell, man? What is 102.7? What radio station is it? It's probably some artsy radio station or something. Triple R? Oh, Melbourne Independent Radio. Okay. That explains it then. I thought I literally picked up signal from hell. Uh, no, that was um, Triple R in Melbourne. The antenna doesn't really do much. Antenna down. Antenna up. Okay, it makes like a 0.3% difference, but that's it. Hearing that is still just... Why would you be playing this at 11 p.m.? Do you want to open a portal to hell? Is that what you want? I just see a bunch of cultists just having this phone and they're just... harnessing the power of welcome devices and... all sorts of entities just... Uh, 
They're saying something. They're chanting something. This may be the only documented evidence of this uh, of this phenomenon. Be hilarious that it just ends and then there's a, like a cheery presenter going, and that was happy circus music for fans of the industrialist scene by Bob and the Ferrets. I fucking don't know. I'm genuinely scared hearing this. <laughs> Oh, that's better. Oh. How, how, how do you go from a portal to hell to uh, LGR? It was some jazzy music now. It's uh, just... Playing the tin cans. Woo! Um, with that done, let's keep moving on. I need to bathe in holy water now. All right, flash win incoming. Power on and off light, which yes. In call light, yes. And in SMS light, yes. Ebook, here we go. Um, here is an ebook. It says six. That's SPRD test. Probably Spreadshirt, most likely. This just has question marks everywhere. Wee! Oh, this is one of the ebooks. But yeah, because it's formatted in Chinese, it can't do too much. It just displays question marks because it doesn't know the characters. So that's what ebook would look like on this thing. Profiles, we've already been into and we've already heard all the ringtones and stuff. So not much I can do there. Services, Internet Opera Mini, Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. So if you do have 2G, you could go on the web with this thing. Still kind of shake my fist at the sky and go, why did 2G get shut down here in Australia? And then also 3G on its way out as well. Would have been so cool to at least try browsing on one of these things, just to see. My files. Let's see if I can go to Doom RPG, which is a Java file, and see if I can install that. Unsupported format. Option, install, nope. So unfortunately, we're not gonna get too far with Java games. I thought maybe we could have installed some Java games on here, but that is a no-go. Sometimes you get lucky with these cheaper devices. Sometimes you can install Java games and sometimes you can't. Bluetooth, what is the device? The device name Safari Mobile, of course it is. All right, oh, help. Open Bluetooth. To use Bluetooth, you must open it first. Well done. Calendar, looks like a stead calendar. Nothing too special about that one. Alarm is that, oh, do you really wanna be woken up with uh, that, yep, I certainly wouldn't. Nope, world clock, close enough. Unit conversion, we can do weight and length and kilogram to pound and kilogram to ounce. That's it, with the dollar sign there. I thought it was a currency converter, but it's just weight and length. Calculator looks like a very standard calculator. Probably this OS is also meant to be used on a touchscreen as well, but obviously this isn't a touchscreen. So some elements have probably been borrowed from other devices and stuff. Tasks is empty. Do we need to do tasks? Not really. Then we have notes, which is just memo. Then we have SDK, which is Vodafone. And then we have stopwatch and that's it. That was not that interesting at all. I have to admit it wasn't that interesting. I thought the stage light would have done something else, you know, bounced around to the music. But if I go back to audio and then do BFG, <laughs> No, it doesn't bounce around, so it is literally just lights. The screen is kind of decent on this. Uh, the, the speaker is nice. The camera I won't comment about because I haven't done the camera test as of yet. Very basic, cheapo device. If you do have 2G in your country, it will definitely work. And you can put four sims in it and use them for several different things. I think in the realm of cheapo phones so far, the DJ1000 that I've said many times throughout this review probably takes the win as one of the most feature-packed cheapo devices that I've looked at on the channel in a while anyways. This was just something we seen on stream and thought it'd be funny to have a look at. And I think I've had my fair share of fun having a look at the Ferrari mobile. So I'm gonna do the absolute right thing and I'm gonna tear this apart. 
without doing any of the camera tests whatsoever, I feel confident that I won't destroy this. Let those be famous last words. I'd be tempted to open up the battery to see if it actually is two cells, but I believe it would be the two cells in there. Well, pretty much in order to get into this thing, we just simply undo some screws and we're in. There's a hole and I don't know what that does. There's, a, there's just a hole there for something. I know what that could be used for. If you're using four SIM cards, now I can pop the front off, I think. Yes, I can. Okay. So there is the keyboard there. I was going to say it reminds me of an E71 keypad. I don't think that's correct. Then we have the yep, Ferrari mobile there. Then the innards of this thing. Well, this looks a little confusing. There's a bit of tape. Just... Okay. Oh, dear Christ. Okay. Wow, that's a big speaker. They weren't lying. <laughs> that is definitely a big speaker that they've put in there. The LED is also just there as well. That kind of just sits in its own little housing. But yeah, there is the big speaker just there. That's definitely a big one. And the camera is just that little guy in there. He did a good job. He tried, all right? Now here is a small problem. How does one take this apart with the LEDs? This may not work how I specifically wanted it to work. Let's kind of just, you know, put things back down, you know, into place and just pretend like they were there. Okay. Now if I just be very, very, very careful, I can flip this over to reveal the motherboard that doesn't have too much on it. Like there's literally nothing to look at on here, except for what is actually powering this thing. This is really janky, uh, to put it nicely. I have a feeling I've killed this. 100% I have a feeling I've killed this. So the processor in this is a Spectrum SC6531D, and then there is a little something there, and you can see the mayhem that I have caused to this motherboard. But hopefully it's fine. I think it's okay. Meanwhile, everything is just dangling from it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Don't worry about that. Sorry for the janky footage. I'm just editing the video on this device and I completely forgot to show you all the RGBs. And all you gotta do is just pop off this cover and there they are. When I was doing the teardown, I wasn't too sure how to actually get to these, but now I've kind of worked it out that they're just stuck on there and the wiring goes through a little hole and then snakes around and connects to the motherboard. Uh, if you're sensitive to flashing lights and stuff throughout this video, I'll have a little note displayed at the start anyways, but there they go. There's five independent RGBs just going off there. That's also got a little code just there as well. But I wonder if you'd be able to reprogram that and be able to do something else. Because you can't do anything on this. It's just stuck as it is. But yeah, there you go. You just stick that back on there. Uh, somehow. Factory. Well, it's back together for the most part. So let me just see if I have killed it. I think I have. I'm pretty sure I have. If it does still work, it'll be amazing, but... Oh, oh it still works! Did I kill the RGBs? <laughs> I didn't! I didn't kill anything! I actually tore it apart without destroying it! I'm proud of that! That still works too, so now I can actually do the camera test and stuff. Oh, well, actually, let me just see if the camera does still work. The camera still does work. All hope is not lost. Well, there you go. That is the teardown of the Ferrari Mobile S555 thing. I'm glad it survived. I was honestly not expecting it to survive that. Well, I'll display all the specifications of this wonderful device to the side. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, to learn all the specifications about our lovely device. Torch still works. Yep, all still works. And with those specs there, that now brings us to the end of this video. This wasn't too exciting, but I guess we were just all curious to see what this thing could do and if it could offer something 
interesting. And while it does have that cool light, I think the DJ 1000s a lot better. Come on, we can all agree on that, can't we? At least, you know, I've got this in my collection now as an oddball device that exists. I don't know who would buy this, but uh, it exists. I would leave a link in the description below for you to check it out, but because it's sold out, uh, not much I can do. But if you wanted to look on AliExpress for similar devices, you can, but I'm pretty sure this was the only one we came across for $32 for this. And I think $32 is about right for this device, for what it offers. If your kid's bugging you for a phone, just give them this. Actually, in hindsight, that's a bad idea. But at least they get RGB and FM radio and one game, one whole game and a bright torch to see where you're going. Just another run of the mill cheapo device that they spelt wrong. It's cool nonetheless though. I hope you've enjoyed this one. First video I'm doing since I took my break, so I think I just was a little bit rambly in this one, but that's okay. We're just having some fun with this. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for sticking around and watching this monstrosity unfold. But if you had to use the timestamps to skip past certain segments, that's completely fine. That's why they're there. And of course, if you needed to use ad block during the video, then that's all good as well. A massive thank you to all the folks displayed on screen for donating to see this as well as donating to see the other item that we also ordered on AliExpress, which that in itself is going to be a very long video, but I'm pretty sure you were all gonna thoroughly enjoy that one. But this one was just a fun one we found towards the end of looking at AliExpress and you folks just said, oh, just get it because it looks funny. So I have delivered my review of this thing. Thank you to all those folks displayed on screen. And once again, thank you to Kevin Saltz. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Kevin Saltz or Saltez for donating the BlackBerry Priv and the Samsung Leadership 8 to me. I really, really do appreciate it. The Priv, I needed parts for to build another one and the Leadership 8, I have never seen one, nor am I ever gonna see another one. So I'm glad to have that in my collection. So I thank you very much for the kind gesture of donating them to me. But that's it, everyone. That is another cheapo device looked at on this channel. I hope you all thoroughly enjoyed this one, even though it was a fairly basic device. I got to show you what this thing is capable of doing and it doesn't do a whole lot but hey we're all curious as i said thanks for watching this one i really do appreciate it i hope you got a kick out of this i didn't realize until the very end that the antenna is actually an antenna what a surprise that is well that would make sense during the fm radio test I'll go back and do that. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until the next time I see you, please take care, stay safe, and be good people. And I will see you all very soon for this streaming phone. Yes, you heard that correct. This is the streaming phone. A phone meant for streaming. And oh boy, there's a lot to talk about on this thing. So until that one, take care, and I'll see you then. Fight for my... I'm not a federal officer of the law.